I know you want quick answers, so I'm gonna move quick. You can pause if you need to see more. I wanna take this image and put it into this image to make this image. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time, and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? The quickest way to select an image in Photoshop is to either activate the Select Subject button or go to the new Object Selection tool where you can click and drag a box around the subject. Photoshop will figure out what's in the inside that's important and shrink wrap to fit. Now see how it didn't quite get by the ears? Let me show you something. Command or Control D. If I were to just go up to the Select Subject button, which is only active if you're on this quick selection area, and I click that, watch how it does just a little better. See how it shrank the selection in between the ears where it didn't before? So I tend to use that one the most. Select and mask. This is where I go in and tell Photoshop with the refine edge brush that pre-populates automatically. Just like, hey, I don't think you got that little part right there and everything else looks good. I'll choose smart radius and just tell Photoshop, but go ahead and check around two pixels around the entire selection. Make sure you did a good job. Sometimes I'll smooth in feather by two to four and then on feather 0.2 to 0.8, but here I'm not going to do that. I don't need to decontaminate the colors. I'm just gonna to output to a new layer with layer mask, which is my favorite. I'll click okay. It duplicates the original, so I'm not working on the original, which is nice, right? It gives me a layer mask and it automatically is showing me on the transparency. And if I already have an image open, which I do in Photoshop on this tab, well, all I have to do is click and drag on the layer, drag it all the way up to the new tab of the image I want it to go into. And then here's the trick. You got to pull it down into that image and let it go. Now I'm going to hit Command or Control T to activate free transform, grab one of the corner handles just to shrink it down. And then clicking on the inside to figure out where I want to position it and to what scale. I want it to be fairly dominant, maybe something like that. Maybe a touch bigger, really close. Hit enter. So color cast is going to bug me. This is much, the uh, rhino is much more warm than the scene. Let's see what color temperature the scene is. Quick way to do that, I'm gonna duplicate that background layer. I'm gonna pull it above. I'm gonna go up to filter, blur, average. That's gonna average all the colors in the scene. Now, if I toggle open the info palette, which if you don't see yours, just go to window and down to info. And I'm gonna hover over and look at the numbers, the RGB numbers right here, 199, 208, and 213. In general, whatever number is the highest, means that's the color cast that you're, you have the most dominant of. And then the next highest, obviously, is the blend of the two. So 213, that means this has a slight blue cast. And since the next highest number is green, then that means it has a slight blue cyan cast, right? Because all colors are made up of the red, green, and blue light. So basically, this tells me this is a cool gray, which is perfect to know. Now, if I were to hold down the Alt or Option key while I'm hovering between my layers, my tool is going to convert to this square with a downward pointing arrow. I just click it and it's going to clip that color to my subject, which offers some graphic possibilities if you're going more towards a, a different artistic or graphic design interpretation. But I just want the color. So essentially, I'm going to activate the blend mode and I'm going to go all the way down to color. And then I'll lower the opacity just a little to bring back some of that original. I just want to make sure the tint, I want to make sure it fits in the scene, or at least it looks like it could fit in the scene. So now we need to worry about the reflections right? Because there's everything has got a reflection in the floor. So let's create that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If you just select the layer of the Rhino and hit Command or Control J, it duplicates it. Select Command or Control T to activate free transform and then right click inside of it. Go down to flip vertical and notice what happened. It's the clipping mask is only clipping to the top one. I'll show you how to fix that. There are so many ways to do shadows. I'm going to show you a, a very quick down and dirty way. I'm going to focus on the first two feet and then the back two feet. I'm going to click enter. Then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unclip this by hovering in between and clicking. It unclips it. Then I'm going to select both of them. Hit command or control G to put them in a folder because I need a couple more selections. I'll toggle it back open so we can see inside of it. Now I can hover between that blurred color and click, and it's still going to apply the color to every single image I put in here now, which is perfect. I need to make sure that the reflection feet are underneath the primary subject's feet. So I need to grab that copy and just drag it below the original. On that layer mask, I'm going to hit B for brush, and I'm painting at 100%. And I'm just going to paint out these because I don't even care about those. I'm going to click back on the front feet, Command or Control T, right click inside there and choose Warp. Now I can choose to kind of warp these feet however, however it is that's going to best benefit me for this particular refre reflection. 
And that's not bad for the the front. The left one's the best. It's, it's going to be a compromise unless I want to do them all individually, and I don't. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to click Enter. I need to ha pop back over to my mask, hit B, so I can paint that out. And then I just need to lower the opacity a lot, right? Because look how screened back all the other reflections are. They need to match that same density as these poles. So I'm going to really pull that back, probably to about there. That seems to be about right. Now I'm going to go back to the original, Command and Control J, Command and Control T, right click inside, then right click, choose flip vertical and see how it maintained the color cast because it's inside that folder group now. I'll pull this down, try to get those feet to line up a little bit. Enter, click on the mask, B for brush, and I'll just paint out the front feet now. I'll make sure that this is on the very bottom and then I'll hit Command or Control T, right click, choose warp, and just kind of tweak the feet till it looks, again, they don't have to be perfect for these reflections. I'll go with that, hit enter, lower the opacity. Even though they're super dark, they're still going to be fairly low in opacity. I'm going to go with something like that. Now, here's the thing. There should be a shadow on the floor from the rhino, especially based on how strong this lighting is. And that's another thing that we should probably address. Let's flatten that out a touch. So I'm going to choose that top rhino layer, choose levels dialog box. And I'm just going to pull the blacks in just a little, just so it's not quite so so strong right through here. I'm gonna go to the very bottom of that group and I'm gonna hold down the command key and add a new layer. That I add the layer below the layer I'm on. I'm gonna hit B for the brush, D for default colors. Just make sure I'm painting with black at 100%. And this is gonna look horrible in the beginning, but it's okay. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Just pretend the light source is coming down like at this angle. So, okay, I just hit the floor. So round face, a little bit of a round body right there really round muscular torso and head right here kind of goes back in space but maybe still a little bit round a little bit round now here's the thing just lower the opacity so there's no harsh shadows except for right over here which you know if you wanted to mimic that we can make a harsh shadow just directly under the feet but first i'm gonna try to get this to around here and to make it more believable i'll go up to filter and blur I'll choose motion blur only to stretch it out a little bit, kind of drag the angle until it matches with the floor. And that just stretches out the shadow a bit. Now I can add a new layer, adds directly above the layer I just did. And now I can just come in with a smaller brush and make those feet just right where they're hitting the floor a little more dramatic. And then again, that's gonna be a little harsh. So you drag the opacity back just a touch, just to give it more of an anchor. And as always, you can make as many passes with that as you want. Maybe you want a bigger brush and then fade that back, and maybe come back to this one and make that opacity a little deeper, come back to this one, make this opacity a little lighter. So that's a great thing, you get to kind of choose. Now the next thing I see, let's change the color of that green sign. There are a lot of ways to do it. Select the background layer, go up to select color range, and just click on that and see it, it selected the arrow for me. You can adjust your fuzziness slider to taste, click OK. I'll add a new layer above that, and I will double click on this foreground picker, and I'll choose red, drag it up, and I'll choose the very closest red I can. Now, perfect red should be 255, zero, and zero. Enter. So now I've put red in my foreground. I'm on the brush tool. So now I just need to paint over that, that selection, and the, and the selection is going to constrain the color into the selection. Command or Control D. So I've quickly integrated the scene and made it look believable. Now, if I wanted to resize this for Instagram, for a landscape image, they like 1080 by 608. Choose the crop tool and choose 1080 by 608. Actually, I'll come in some to make sure that matches. Pull that over a little bit. Now, this is a ratio. What that means is I've now cropped it to the ratio of Instagram, but it's still my big file. So if I go up to image and image size, it's still a, a much larger file than they want. Let me show you how to make sure you're outputting to the exact pixel dimensions. But first, do you notice something as we're looking at the image? It's coming across. Sometimes you'll see that. If you do, that's obviously from this layer mask. Command click on the mask. All you have to do is hit the M key whenever you have those little problems. Command minus to fit it in the screen. I'm gonna select the inside the black. Command shift I to inverse the selection. Shift delete to bring up the fill dialog box. And I'm just gonna choose black. Fill that. Command D to get rid of it, turn on the eyeball so I don't see it. Now that line is totally gone. So how do we save this as an Instagram size? Well, we know we've done everything we're supposed to, so I'm gonna hit Command S. That's just gonna make sure I've, I'm saving the file as I would want to. And go ahead and embed the sRGB profile if the primary use of this image is gonna be web. 
it'll display better. So now I have all my original files saved as a PSD. I can manipulate them whenever I want and change my mind about things. So now is a good time to go to image, image size. And now we're going to change the physical pixel dimensions. We're going to type in 10, 1080, and it's going to automatically toggle the 608 because we've already configured it to that ratio, but now we're actually making it those specific pixels. Click OK. So now the image is resized to the Instagram pixel dimension. So now I'm going to hit Command Shift S because I want to make sure I don't overwrite my original file. So that activated the Save As command. You could also go to File and Save As, choose Photoshop, down to JPEG, let it embed the color profile of sRGB, and it's telling you we can only save this as a copy because JPEG doesn't handle layers, which is perfect. That's what we want. Click Save. Image quality. This is a, such a small size file anyway. I'd go ahead and leave it at 12. Click OK. Now here's the thing. So when I go to close out, it's going to say, do you want to save this image? You do not want to save this image because it would then overwrite that original PSD that we saved when we started this whole process. That's my workflow. I create the image, I save the original PSD, and then I make changes. What do you think? Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Oh my God, I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.